Hello everyone and welcome to our session. It's for the third secondary year, Sociology and Economics section. In this mathematics chapter, we will start with the functions of economics and social sciences. This chapter is made up of three parts. The first part is about the cost, revenue and the profit functions. The second part is about the demand and supply functions. And the third and final part is about the depreciation of an asset. This session will be the first session of the first part and we will be talking mainly about the cost. At the end of this session, you will be able to calculate the fixed cost, the total cost, the average cost and the marginal cost and you will be able to interpret economically the obtained results. Let's start with an activity. An enterprise produces smartphones every month. According to a statistical study, they realized that they pay each month the following expenses. 30 million Lebanese Lira as advertising expenses. 10 million Lebanese Lira for maintenance. 70 million Lebanese Lira as salaries of the employees. And 400,000 Lebanese Lira for the production of one smartphone. Note that this last one depends on the number of produced smartphones while the other ones don't. And we're given that there is no increase in the cost of material from one month to the other. Notice in the first question, in a given month, this enterprise produced 1,000 smartphones. Calculate in Lebanese Lira the total cost of production. So in order to find the total cost of production, I must add all types of expenses for this enterprise, even the ones that are not depending on the number of items produced. And also note that the expenses of production of one smartphone must be repeated 1,000 times. So I have to multiply it by 1,000, which will give me this sum of expenses independent of the rate of production of the number of produced items added to 400,000 multiplied by 1,000. 400,000 is the price of production of one smartphone and 1,000 is the number of produced smartphones. So the total cost of production of 1,000 smartphones will be 510 million Lebanese Lira. Now in number 2, if each smartphone is sold for 600,000 Lebanese Lira, calculate in Lebanese Lira the revenue achieved upon selling the 1,000 smartphones. So when I say the revenue achieved, it means the amount of money gained by the enterprise for selling these 1,000 smartphones. So if the selling price of one smartphone is 600,000 Lebanese Lira, I must multiply this selling price by 1,000, which is the total number of sold smartphones, to get 600 million Lebanese Lira as the revenue achieved by this enterprise. In number 3, calculate in Lebanese Lira the profit achieved upon selling the 1,000 smartphones. What's the difference between revenue and the profit? So the revenue is the total amount of money obtained by the enterprise for selling these smartphones, while the profit is how much money the enterprise gained by this selling process. So I have to remove what the enterprise paid in the production in order to know the amount of money this enterprise gained by this selling process, which will be the revenue minus the total cost. So part of the money that the enterprise got by selling the smartphones will cover the expenses of the production. And the extra part gained by the enterprise is called the profit. It will be the revenue minus the total cost, which is 90 million Lebanese Lira. This was a numerical example. Let's now generalize this idea and consider that an enterprise is producing X items. I will then be talking about the different cost functions. So denote by X the produced quantity of a given enterprise. In the previous example, X was 1000. Let's now generalize the case. The total cost function, it's the total economic cost of production of an article. So as discussed before, there is one type of cost that is independent of the produced items. And there is a type that is depending on the number of produced items. All these costs together will make the total economic cost. This is the cost function. It's made up of the variable cost, 
which is one that varies according to the quantity produced, such as the labor, the electricity expenses, the raw materials. You know that the raw materials needed to produce one smartphone is not the same as the quantity of raw material used for 1,000 smartphones. So the more items we're producing, the more raw materials we'll need. So such cost is depending on the quantity produced. It varies according to the quantity produced. This is why we call it the variable cost. And we have the fixed cost, which is independent of the quantity produced, such as the rent. So you know that if a factory is paying for rent, they will need to pay even if they are not producing any items. So the rent is independent of the quantity produced. The total cost function will be equal to the sum of these two different types of costs. So I have CT of X, which is the total cost function in terms of X, is equal to CF plus CV of X. Now you might ask, why is CF, which is the fixed cost, independent of X? It's not a function of X, since the fixed cost doesn't vary when the quantity is varying. So if X is varying, the fixed cost will always remain the same. This is why it's independent of X, it's a constant. And also, note that if you replace X by zero, you will get that the variable cost is zero, since it depends on the quantity produced. So if I'm not producing any items, it means I'm not paying any extra expenses for the production. All what I'm paying in this case will be the fixed cost. This is why CF, which is the fixed cost, will be equal to the total cost when X is equal to zero. This is an example. An enterprise produces a certain article. The total cost function CT is modeled as CT of X is equal to X squared plus X plus 1 in millions of Lebanese lira. In this chapter, you have to be very careful with the units given for each function. Here, any value of the total cost will be followed by millions of Lebanese lira. Where X is the produced quantity of the enterprise in thousands of articles, so also X has a different unit. When they say x is between 0 and 5, let's choose x equals 4. This means 4,000 articles that are produced. In the first question, calculate in Lebanese lira the fixed cost. We said previously, if we want to find the fixed cost, we use the total cost function and we replace x by 0. So I will be finding the cost when no items are produced. So this will give me... 1 million Lebanese lira. So the fixed cost of this enterprise is 1 million Lebanese lira. Now in number 2, calculate in Lebanese lira the cost of production of 2,000 articles. So what do you think? Should we replace X by 2,000? Of course not. You have to be very careful. X is a number between 0 and 5. And X has a unit of thousands of articles. So when I say 2,000 articles, which X corresponds to this production of 2,000 articles? X must be 2 in this case. So to find X, you have to divide the number of articles by the unit of X. So if I have 2,000 articles, the corresponding value of X is then 2. And then once you find X, you replace it in the total cost function. You get 7 million Lebanese lira. So the total cost of production of 2,000 articles is 7 million Lebanese lira. Note that in normal situations, the total cost function is always strictly increasing. And what do we mean by this? Logically speaking, if we are producing one item, the total cost will not be equal to the cost of producing 100 or 1000 items. So the more items we're producing, the more cost we have to pay. Now, what is the average cost function? The average cost or the unit cost from its name, it's the unit cost. So it is the cost of producing one unit among the X produced units. So if I have the cost of producing X units and I want the cost of producing one unit among these X units, I will have to divide by X. So the average cost function denoted by C bar is defined as C bar of X equals total cost in terms of X divided by X. Now, in order to find the production of one article, the cost of production of one article, I will have to divide by the unit of X. So, just like in the previous example, X represented 1000 articles. To know the price of one article, we need to divide by the unit of X 
in the previous case it was 1000 it can be any number so you have to make sure if you want to find the price or the cost of production of one item you need to divide the average cost by the unit of x what is the marginal cost function so the marginal cost function denoted by mc it's the cost of production of one more unit of a product so let's say we already produced x units the cost of production of the x plus 1 unit, which comes right after the x unit, is the marginal cost. And it's defined as mc of x equals total cost of producing x plus 1 units minus the total cost of producing x units, which is the cost of production of the x plus first unit. In larger quantities, so if I have a large amount of production, we can model the marginal cost by the derivative of the total cost function. So mc of x will be in this case equal to c prime t of x. And this rule can be applied whenever we have a large amount of production. This is an example. An enterprise produces a certain article. The total cost function CT is modeled as x squared plus x plus 1. This is the same as the total cost in the previous example. So the questions now are about the marginal cost and the average cost. We will be solving them one by one. So let's start with number 1. Express C bar of x in terms of x. In million Lebanese lira. So what is C bar of X? It's the average cost or the unit cost. And how do I find it? I find it by dividing the total cost function by X. So I get X squared plus X plus 1 over X in million Lebanese lira. In number 2, I have to find this average cost when X is equal to 2. And then I need to interpret economically the value obtained. So I'm going to replace x by 2 in c bar, which will give me 7 over 2 million Lebanese lira. And what does this 7 over 2 or what does this value represent? It represents the cost of production of each unit out of the two units discussed in this part. So the interpretation, the average cost of production of one unit among the two produced units, why 2? Because we replaced x by 2. So, the average cost of production of each of these two units will be 3.5 multiplied by 1 million, which is 3,500,000 Lebanese lira. Which means that the average cost of production is 3,500 Lebanese lira. And what did we do in this part? We divided by the unit of X. So, X represents 1,000 articles. If I want to find the cost of production of one article, I have to divide... The cost of production of one unit by the unit of x, which is 1,000, and this will give me 3,500 Lebanese lira. In number 3, I have to express the marginal cost mc of x in terms of x. Notice that the quantity produced is in thousands of articles, which is large enough to use the fact that the marginal cost is the derivative of the total cost function which will give me to x plus 1 in million Lebanese lira. We keep it like this in terms of x. And in number 4, we have to calculate the marginal cost when x is equal to 3, and then we will interpret this result. So I'm going to replace x by 3, which will give me 7 in million Lebanese lira. And what does this 7 mean? It means that when 3 units are already produced, this is the marginal cost, if 3 units are already produced, the cost of production of the fourth unit is 7 million Lebanese lira. So the fourth thousandth articles that are produced will cost 7 million Lebanese lira. Now, these were the exercises we will solve together as an application on the different types of costs. To do more exercises on this chapter, you can refer to your textbook in page 262, exercises 4 to 12. So the more you practice on this chapter, the easier it will be for you to interpret the obtained results. Thank you for your attention. We will meet in session 2 to know more about the revenue functions and the profit functions. Until then, please stay safe.